Well, hello there. I'm snorkeling on the floor of the ocean. Now, normally it's ridiculous that eagles swim because they can't. Since I'm here, I'm today going to review the SpongeBob SquarePants movie. Is this going to be the best undersea film in history? Let's find out. Under the sea, under the sea. Darling, it's better down there, it's better. Take it from me. I'm on the shore, they work all day. Out in the sun, they slave away. What is the boating? What are you floating under the sea? <laughs> The Story Let's start with the story. In this lively animated adventure, undersea oddball SpongeBob SquarePants and his starfish friend Patrick embark on a quest to clear the name of Mr. Krabs, the owner of the Krusty Krab restaurant who has been framed for stealing the crown of ocean deity King Neptune. Leaving the familiar confines of Bikini Bottom, Spongebob and Patrick venture out towards Shell City, where they hope to find Neptune's crown, but numerous obstacles stand, or float, in their way. What's my opinion about this? Well, I like this movie more than the television series, although I've only seen a few episodes. Plus, I wasn't bored for a second, and I laughed out loud numerous times when I saw the movie. The Animation Let's discuss the animation. The ship used for the live-action pirate scenes in the beginning was the 1960 replica of the HMS Bounty, a merchant ship used by the British Empire in the late 1700s. The replica ship was sunk in late 2012 by Hurricane Sandy. Interestingly enough, a character in the movie and series is named Sandy. The first two signal flags in front of the Krusty Krab mean Romeo and India respectively, while the last two mean Uniform and Kilo. The middle flag has no meaning. This is the first time Karen is seen as a computer monitor on wheels. She is seen as this very often on the series after the movie's release. When Spongebob and Patrick were in the nut bar, there was a picture of Popeye along with some panels from his comic, and what appears to be a panel from Mutt's. When the Cyclops is making a knick-knack out of a clam, he names in Alexander Clam Bell, which is a parody of telephone inventor Alexander Graham Bell with a telephone replica attached. An 11-foot-long David Hasselhoff figure was built so cameramen couldn't film without straining the real Hasselhoff. This is the last traditionally animated film from Paramount Pictures and Nickelodeon Movies until its successor, the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water, which was released approximately 11 years after the first movie. It is also the last Nickelodeon animated movie to be released on VHS. The Characters Now it's time to go over the characters. Spongebob Squarepants is a goofball sea sponge who likes to goof off with his friend Patrick. At first he thought he was going to be the new manager of Krusty Krab too, but that job was instead given to Squidward. But after his lifelong journey, his dream came true after doing things kids couldn't do. Patrick is a starfish who is Spongebob's best friend. He is overweight and dim-witted and lives under a rock in Bikini Bottom next door to Squidward's Maui. His most significant character trait is his lack of common sense which gets him and Spongebob into trouble. And then we have Mindy Mermaid who is King Neptune's daughter. She knows all the names of the sea creatures due to being next in line of ruler of the sea. Patrick develops a crush on her before he and Spongebob begin their journey. She is voiced by Scarlett Johansson, who also voiced Ka from the live-action Jungle Book film, and Ash the Porcupine from Sing. 
Eugene Krabs is the manager of Krusty Krabs and is SpongeBob's boss. He was framed by Plankton for stealing King Neptune's crown and selling it to Shell City. And if the crown isn't brought back in six days, he will be fried. Plankton is the rival of SpongeBob and all his friends. In the film, he steals King Neptune's crown and blames it on Mr. Krabs and begins selling Krabby Patties at the Chum Bucket and enslaves the citizens with bucket helmets and has them rebuild the town and rename it Planktopolis. King Neptune is the king of the sea. At the beginning, he gives harsh punishments to those who touch his crown. When Plankton stole it and framed Krabs for it, Neptune freezes Krabs and gives Spongebob and Patrick six days to retrieve the crown or Krabs will be executed. And then there's Dennis, who was a hitman hired by Plankton to exterminate Spongebob and Patrick to prevent them from retrieving the crown in Shell City. When he ambushes them on the other side of the trench, he use, tries to use his spiky boots to finish them off. He is voiced by Alec Baldwin, who also voiced Makunga from Madagascar Escape to Africa, North from Rise of the Guardians, and The Boss Baby. In this movie, SpongeBob's voice is changed to a higher pitch versus SpongeBob SquarePants series for an unknown reason possibly Tom Kenny's aging or the creator's whim. Ironically, Spongebob, Patrick, and the sea creatures breathe air in the film. This film is much better than the television series alongside the sequel. Here are some reviews I'm laying out. This film was intended to be the show's series finale, but due to the success of the film as well as the show's popularity, Spongebob Squarepants was then renewed for a fourth season, continuing the series' run. Further episodes of the series were said to take place before this movie. The original cover-up plot of the film had Spongebob going to rescue Patrick from a fisherman in Florida. This was an obvious reference to Finding Nemo and was later revealed by Tom Kennedy to be just a joke plot which he made up to keep the fans busy. This was the second Nickelodeon movies feature film to get a sequel after the Rugrats movie from 1998. This is the first Nickelodeon film to become a box office hit since Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius from 2001. This is the last film to be based on a Nickelodeon TV series in six years until The Last Airbender from 2010. Originally, Spongebob and Patrick left Shell City and met Sandy on dry land, and while she gives them advice to take the bus from town to the beach while she's being followed by a group of men in black suits, this scene was cut from the film due to Patrick throwing up repeatedly. I liked this film when I first saw it, and I also liked the sequel, the Spongebob movie, Sponge Out of Water. Well, it sure was fun reviewing this movie on the episode with you today, but I need to get to the surface for air, and I think I might begin pruning, so I better fly home now. So I'll see you all really soon, and this is where my beach party sets sail for the sunset. See you later!